shout out to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to be developing my alternate art styles. In recent videos, I've been playing around with different ways of drawing. The first being called my anti-style since it's basically the opposite of how I usually draw. The second being my hyper style because it's taking things I like and pushing them to the extreme. And thirdly, my oldest alternate style, my chibi elf style. It's basically just simpler and kind of chibi-like. The characters are also often elves for some reason. Recently, I've been wanting to develop the styles more, try some new things with them, and also maybe iron out some things I don't like about the styles. The first thing I want to try to do is draw a boy character in my hyper style. I wanted to do this when I was first creating the hyper style video, but sadly ran out of time. So you would think I would start by trying to draw a boy character, but I'm actually going to draw out a girl character first. The reason I'm doing this is because in the hyper style video, for a lot of the characters I was drawing, they had smaller chibi-like proportions. However, in the final illustration, I drew longer proportions because I didn't want my hyper style to simply just be chibi characters. Then it would just be my chibi style. <laughs> so yeah, I never actually drew out the proportions I had decided on. I only drew them in the final illustration. And so that's why I'm drawing out the proportions in a more simple pose here. I wanted to have something to compare the boy proportions to. For my hyper style, I try to keep everything very round and soft. I also make the proportions very stylized. Because the characters do have very large heads, to help balance things out, I make the hip area wider to help give the body some weight especially since the legs and arms taper in a good amount. Speaking of the legs, I wanted to note on their proportions a bit. A lot of times for chibi-like characters, the legs are often around the same length as the torso. This is very different compared to how usual proportions work. Usually the legs are equal to the length of the torso plus the head. However, to give chibis their childish-like look, we instead make the legs an equal length to just the torso. But like I said, I'm not going for chibi, so I instead make the legs equal to the torso plus the head like usual. It's kind of funny because this results in the legs looking really long, even if they technically aren't. This character is still only four heads in length. For the hands and feet, I do draw them on the smaller side, but they aren't super small. I feel like they still feel in proportion to everything. I did consider making the hands and feet very large, but I didn't want to do this since this is something my auntie style kind of does. So here is the girl character. Now we have something to compare the boy to. Also, to make things kind of fun, I decided to draw a hyperstyle version of my OC Brayson. He is one of the characters from my webcomic, My Next Door Neighbors. To help me keep the boy in similar proportion to the girl, I decided to draw my sketch for the boy over the girl. I just changed the color of my girl sketch and lowered the opacity so it's easier to draw over. For the head, I was considering making it more angular, since more angular shapes often come across as more masculine. But I did not want to break the rule of keeping shapes super round for this style. So I didn't change much for the proportions except for the shape of the eyes. I wanted them to match Brayson's usual aloof for bored kind of look. I was thinking about drawing Emmett in this hyper style but chose Brayson since I wanted a little bit more of a challenge and to kind of see um, if I could make a different feeling character. It felt like it would be too easy to draw Emmett in this style because he would kind of really fit with it. My main concern for the boy characters is making them feel like they are balanced. Like I said, for the girls, I make the hips a bit on the larger side to help balance out the size of the head. However, for my male characters, making the hips wide isn't as much of an option, since a lot of times in stylization, male hips aren't as defined. So to help give some feeling of weight and balance, I decided to have the ankles and wrists not taper in as much. I especially tried to do this with the ankles and also made the feet larger. I was hoping doing this would help ground the character and provide a bit of balance and weight in the lower half of the body. I didn't do it here, but another thing I think I would do for the boys is make them wear pants that flare out at the bottom or also more chunky shoes. Once again, to add weight, but I wanted to try to capture what I wanted without needing to rely on clothing. Now I'm just drawing in the hair real quick, trying to keep it similar to Bryson's usual hair, but slightly changing it to fit the hyper style like adding the little floating hair strand. That's still one of my favorite details of the style. <laughs> so here is the male proportions next to the female proportions. I'm happy I finally got to do this. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while now, but never got around to doing. And I do feel happy with the result, I think. I didn't totally know how I was going to go about drawing boys in this style. The next thing I'm wanting to work on is related to my chibi elf style and my story that revolves around my character Pariah. But first I want to thank Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video. 
Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. want to share Japanese culture and invite everyone to experience Japan from the comfort of their own homes through their snack boxes. Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. are both monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes, but both offer very different experiences. First, we have Tokyo Treat with the theme of Starlight Snack Fest. You'll get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavor Japanese snacks are only available in Japan for a limited time. Continue the celebration of Cherry Blossom with Kit Kat Banana Caramel, Sweet and Salty Spring Chips, and Ghana Matcha Truffle. You can learn more about all the snacks you receive as well as allergen information in this really neat booklet. The booklet also contains a wealth of knowledge about Japanese culture. Two of my personal favorite snacks from this box are the Piccola Sakura Matcha and Sakura Cherry Boche. These Piccola Sakura Matcha have a delicate aroma of Sakura that mixes with the rich cream made from Uji Matcha, making a delightful and surprising combination. Boche are delicate cake-like pastries with sweet cream. This one is bursting with cherry flavor and the cream was super yummy. Next we have Sakura Co. If you're looking for an authentic Japanese snack subscription box, this one is for you. Each box comes with 20 traditional and authentic artisan Japanese snacks including Japanese teas and one special Japanese tableware. Sakura Co. is partnering with local Japanese snack makers to continue to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over 100 years. This box's theme is Moonlight Sakura. This theme is inspired by Yozakura, the tradition of nighttime cherry blossom viewing. Experience artisan Japanese treats like Sakura Ame, Tetra Pond, Peach Hibiscus Tea, and so much more. Speaking of tea, this month's kitchenware is a Sakura tea glass. Its simple but elegant design is so cute. Two of my favorite snacks from this box are the White Soy Sauce Sakura Arare and Genji Pai. These ultra thin Arare delivers a satisfying crisp and delicate crunch that complements the light delightful taste. Baked to perfection with a glossy sugar finish, these classic biscuits feature a light crispiness that goes very well with their sweet taste. They are so good and I love them so much. If you want to treat yourself or a loved one to these wonderful treats, check out the links below. If you use the code HANAMI, you get an additional bonus item in your Sakura Co. boxes for life. You can also use my code DRAWMANGA to get $5 off your first box. Thank you so much to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to drawing. So the current side project I'm kind of working on is my webcomic, My Next Door Neighbors. However, I'm starting to get towards the end of working on it. I still have several months left, but it's starting to reach completion. So of course I'm starting to think about what kind of projects I want to work on after it. I'm highly considering Pariah's story, but one thing I have been stuck on recently is how I'd want to go about illustrating it. And also how I want to stylize the world. Tell me out, I found some references I felt like would help me on Pinterest, as well as Google. A lot of my searches included the movies Epic and the Tinkerbell movies. Since they have tiny people and fairies like Pariah's World, they seemed like good references. I was going to start by maybe designing some buildings for Pariah's World. However, I kind of got sidetracked. Like I said, one of the things I keep questioning is what kind of illustrative style I want to do for Pariah's Story. And recently I've been thinking a looser watercolor kind of look would be really fun. Plus, since Pariah's World revolves around plants and nature, I feel like a watercolor effect would help lean into that natural feeling. So I wanted to try to see if I could get that loose watercolor look that I'm imagining in Clip Studio Paint. I start by sketching out these mushrooms. As usual, I'm using the right burrow pen to sketch them. Now I'm taking different brushes that I got from the Clip Studio Paint asset library and coloring in the mushrooms plus the mossy floor. That is one thing I've often thought about is that if I illustrate Pariah's story, everything would be surrounded by dirt on the ground and they can't really walk on grass because it's all big compared to them. And I never really liked the idea of this, of always having to make the ground just be dirt. However, when looking at pictures of a forest floor, there's often a lot of moss. So maybe for a lot of areas, I would have them be covered with moss to make things more pleasing to look at. Or they could also have paths made of stones or something. But for the more naturey areas, I would definitely include moss. I would go ahead and tell you all the brushes I'm using to color this mushroom. They are a combination of different watercolor brushes I found and they are really nice. However, they didn't really seem to give me the look I was going for. I also felt like I had to do too much work to get the watercolor to kind of look how I wanted it to. And if I was going to be doing this for a comic, I would need it to be super easy and fast to execute. So already this wasn't feeling like a super great option. It was just a little too time consuming and didn't look how I wanted. However, I wanted to keep giving these brushes a chance, so I tried sketching out Pariah. She is making the same kind of expression as this little comic page here. 
Also, I feel the need to say I've never really liked the way this page is rendered. It was a really quick and simple thing I made for a video, and I definitely wouldn't want to render Pariah's story in this way. The harsh lines and solid colors don't really capture the feeling of nature, and it just feels a little too harsh. Plus, my webcomic is on the cleaner, more digital side, so I feel like for my next project, it would be fun to go with a different way of drawing. However, I sometimes have a hard time being more loose with things, so I feel like I'd be battling with myself a little bit because I'd want to try to tighten things up and make them more clean. <laughs> I'd have to be like, no, stay loose, stay sketchy, don't clean it too much. <laughs> Also, I feel like I explain Pariah's story a lot, but if new people are watching, I don't want them to be confused. Uh, so basically, Pariah is a small fairy-like person, and people like her can create seeds and grow flowers. However, Pariah doesn't know what flower she grows and is, for some reason, unable to create seeds. This has made her an outcast in her community, hence her name, Pariah. <laughs> So yeah, for Pariah's story, I'd be drawing a lot of flowers and plants, and that's another reason why I feel like going with a looser style would be good, because I often find nature easier to draw when I do it loosely. My hope after coloring Pariah was that I would like the watercolor effect and maybe I could start drawing some structures like I had planned. However, I wasn't liking the texture and it still felt like it wasn't super easy to achieve. And I started thinking that maybe I should try making my own watercolor brush. Since I couldn't find one that works for me, maybe I could make one on my own. This is something I have only dabbled with in the past and I've never really tried making anything super complicated. And before I jumped into doing this, I watched a short series of YouTube videos on the Clipstudio Paint YouTube channel and they were really helpful. I recommend checking them out if you want to make your own brushes. But I will also show you my process for creating the brush since many of you have questioned me about making brushes in Clipstudio Paint. I'm going to start with the G pen as the base for my brush. To do this, I'm going to duplicate it because I don't want to get rid of the default G pen. <laughs> I named the brush and customized the icon to help me identify the brush and not lose it among my many other brushes. Uh, so right now it's behaving just like the G pen since that's what I copied. And to make my brush, I'll be spending a lot of time in the subtool detail window. This is where we change all the things about the brush. Now there are a ton of options and it can feel very overwhelming, but if you take your time and turn each option on and off, you can get an idea for what they do a lot of times, or you know, read the little info down here. Uh, but for me, having a visual is often very helpful. So to start, I want to make the brush have a more jagged edge. So I go into this area and turn random on. This makes the size of the brush change randomly, so it looks more jagged. Next is the ink section. Under opacity, I make it so the opacity changes with the pressure of my pen. So if I press lighter, the paint gets lighter. This will give me more control over the paint. I'm also going to change the blend mode to multiply. That way my strokes will overlap each other, kind of like how real watercolor does. This was kind of optional, but I also wanted my colors to be able to mix. So I turned on color mixing and went with the smear mixing option since I liked how I was behaving the most during testing. For now, under brush tip, all I did was lower the density and make things feel more feathery. But don't worry, we'll be coming back here soon. <laughs> Spraying effect is an important area for this brush. It'll help me get an even more random edge to the brush. Spraying effect basically takes the shape of the brush and sprays it as a particle. However, if I make the particles pretty large in size, we can still get a solid look. Also, make sure to turn on brush size. This makes it so the particles will adjust accordingly to your brush size. If you make the brush smaller, the particles will too. Also in this edited footage, it probably looks like I'm being really decisive and know exactly what I'm doing, but I did so much fiddling around with the settings and there's a ton of cut footage. <laughs> there was a lot of turning off and on and sliding sliders up and down. And yeah, I did a lot of experimenting. Under stroke, I don't change much. I just turn on blend brush tips with darken because I like how it looks. I want my brush to have some texture to it and not be totally smooth. So I made a texture using a variety of textures in Clip Studio Paint and registered it as a material. I make sure to check these two boxes to make it so I can apply the texture to my brush. Then for my brush in the texture section, I just select my texture and now my brush applies it along with the color. I do play around with the settings for this until it feels right. Lastly, or what 
felt like lastly. <laughs> I turned on watercolor edge. This gives my strokes a bit of a border to them, kind of like how watercolor often gets. Once again, I kind of just played around with the settings until I was happy. So this was nice. I was feeling pleased with the brush. However, it still just wasn't quite there. I kind of kept playing with settings, but just changing the settings was no longer helping. So I decided to start playing around with the shape of the tip of the pen. And this sent me down a rabbit hole of trial and error that took a really long time. I will spare you the agony of my indecisiveness. <laughs> we will skip forward to where I actually figure out what I want and what I'm doing. Even though I had edited the brush a lot, it still felt a bit too smooth along the edges because it was using a circle as its base. So I made a more jagged circle and I also learned I want little particles to come off of the main shape. So I added some, but with this first attempt I added too many. So I'll get rid of most of them and only leave like two. Also to help give some variation in the opacity, I lightly erased some parts of the shape. Eventually I ended up with this. To use this shape for my brush, I need to make sure the layer it's on is set to gray. This will allow me to change the color of the brush when I'm using it. Then I just register the shape as a material and select this again. Now I apply the shape to my brush and ta-da, it's done. And here is my brush in action. I might end up playing around with it some more, but so far it's getting what I wanted done accomplished. I can get a textured watercolor look without too much work. I can layer colors, mix the colors, and change the opacity all without too much hassle. It's also pretty easy to apply shadows since all I have to do is start coloring over the same spot again. Being that this is like the second brush I have ever created, I feel like it turned out pretty nicely. I thought all of you might like to give it a try, so I posted it on the asset library and you can try it out if you want. I'll put a link in the description and here's the ID number for it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. The brush is called Love to Draw Manga's Watercolor Brush. I didn't get around to designing any architecture like I was planning, but I did get a better idea of how I want to illustrate Pariah's story, which will play a big part into how I draw everything. So overall, I feel like it was a good thing to work on. Plus, it was really neat getting to make a brush of my own. And I hope the info was a little bit helpful. Like I said, the tutorials on the Clip Studio Paint uh, YouTube channel are super helpful, so I recommend checking out those. Lastly, I wanted to work on my anti-style a bit. I mentioned this in the video where I'm developing my anti-style and it's that I wasn't a super big fan of how I rendered the style. I overall really like the proportions, line art, and facial structure. However, the coloring and shading kind of fell flat for me. This is probably because I was trying to stick with the style being the opposite of what I usually do. So I only allowed myself to use muted colors since I pretty much always use super vibrant colors. Since the coloring is the thing I want to experiment with, I need something to color. I thought about coloring one of the sketches I did previously, but it sounded more fun to draw something new and I kind of just felt like drawing in my anti-style again. At first I wasn't sure what I wanted to draw, I was going to just draw a random character, but then I thought it'd be more interesting to draw one of my OCs in the anti-style. And when I started going through my OCs in my head, I thought of Raylan. And right when I thought of her, I was like, oh, I really want to see Raylan in this style, so I had to do it. <laughs> I got really excited. If you don't know, Raylan is a character I made a handful of years ago for a drawing challenge. Even though she was made just for a challenge, I really like how she turned out. So she has always kind of stuck around along with my other characters. I call her my edgy sheep because she has sheep characteristics and she is edgy, I guess. She doesn't act how you think a sheep usually would. For her pose, I'm keeping it pretty simple but wanted to have a little bit of attitude. So she's putting her hands in her hoodie pocket and her weight is kind of shifted to one side. One thing I do like about my anti-style is that it always feels like I can get things done pretty quick when I'm working with it. The more stylized and simple proportions allow me to work faster, especially the super simple faces. The faces are really fast for me to draw. Also, working with sharper lines that are supposed to be kind of messy encourages me to move more quickly. I often find to make sharp straight lines that they turn out better if I draw them quickly Compared to curving soft lines, I often need to do more slowly. Raylan's hair was really interesting to stylize in the style. She has very curly hair that I usually make with wavy lines. But like I said, I need to keep things pointy and edgy, so I did that instead. And it was actually really fun to draw her hair in this way. Also, I mentioned in last week's video that I wanted to try to include the way Omori does scribbly lines in the shadows into some of my art. So I tried it here. I made areas that would be more dark in shadows filled in with scribbly lines. 
I think this helps add to the kind of messy look of this style. And for the hair, I used more swirly textures to kind of help give the idea of her hair being curly. Okay, so now we finally have something for me to color and render. Like I said in the previous video, I was trying to stick with the anti-style challenge, so I didn't allow myself to use saturated colors. However, I feel like saturated colors would look nice with this style. So I filled in Raylan with her usual colors and made them as saturated as I could. I felt like this was an improvement, but still needed more. Previously for the highlights, I made them just white with a hard edge. I do like the hard edge and plan to keep this since it fits with the style better than soft shading. However, I thought it would maybe make things feel more fun and colorful if I chose interesting colors for the highlights. At first I was thinking of adding highlights that were complementary to the opposite sides of the picture. But then I tried going with a triadic color scheme. So I make the base color and find the colors that match up when I draw a triangle on the color wheel. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> and then I apply one color to one side and another color to the other. And this did result in a very funky look, but because I kept changing the colors for the different objects, it ended up kind of looking ugly. <laughs> I don't know, I just didn't like it. So to help calm things out a bit, I made all the highlights on the left the same color and all the highlights on the right the same color. I kind of just randomly chose pink and teal because I liked the way they looked. They felt a little funky and fun, but not overly so. I imagine the colors I choose for the highlights if I use the style in the future would kind of depend on the feeling I was wanting. Oh, also I almost forgot I also added some shadows and I also used really saturated colors for them as well. I mostly used kind of saturated purples and blues. Using bright colors does kind of go against this being my anti-style, but I like this way of rendering a lot more and I had more fun with it. Also, I kind of want to try using my alternate styles more often, so I plan to do a video where I draw your characters, but you can request which style you would like to see me draw your character in, like my normal style, anti-style, hyper style, or chibi elf style. I'll put all of the info on how to enter in the description. I'll also probably make a short announcing this on my channel, so keep out an eye for that. Uh, but yeah, I'll be doing an I Draw Your OC video, but you can pick which style you want me to draw the OC in. Anyways, here is all that I did in this video. I got to see how I draw boys in my hyper style. I got to play around with how I want to render Pariah's story and made a new brush. And I decided on a way of rendering for my anti style that I like. I'm really glad I was finally able to do all of this. I've been wanting to do this stuff for a while now, and I hope you found it interesting to watch. Before we end, I want to thank my super awesome YouTube members and Patreon patrons for their support. It means so much to me. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!